Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Brett Madigan and welcome back to Mad Again. After trying the Rode NTG2 and comparing it to my Blue Yeti, which I'm currently using now, I noticed that, well, I wasn't really satisfied with the overall sound signature. And that's why I purchased this microphone, Sennheiser MKE 600. To understand what I mean by sound signature, I'll be using my Blue Yeti as a control set to cardioid, which is positioned about the same distance away from my mouth as the shotgun microphone. So you should be able to hear some reverb, or at least with the testing, you'll definitely be able to hear it. On paper, both of these shotgun mics seem very similar, but in practice, they're vastly different. For the purpose of this video, I won't be focusing much on the physical nature of how the sound is captured with these microphones. It's important to note the polar patterns are very similar. However, both manufacturers treat noise or unwanted sound very differently. With Sennheiser claiming to reject side and rear noise, then Rode, who seem to be more concerned with preventing low end noise from air conditioners or traffic. It seems the NTG2 was designed more for professional use. This isn't a review, so more of a demonstration of my findings. I guess this is more of a thought experiment as I'm not a sound engineer and have no idea why they perform so drastically. So maybe I need your help. Now I do want to know how this translates for indoor recording, or does it matter at all? Both shotgun microphones will be connected to my Focusrite Solo 3rd Gen with the XLR input and air enabled at more or less the same gain level. This is my Blue Yeti with sound treatment. This is my Blue Yeti without sound treatment. This is the NTG2 with sound treatment. This is the NTG2 without sound treatment. This is the MKE 600 with sound dampening. This is the MKE 600 without sound dampening. During the edit, I realized the NTG2 sounded pretty good when it's placed about this far away from my head. Though I should probably warn you, those clips for the NTG2 were recorded over a month ago. So I look a little bit different. So this is what the microphone is like about this far away from my head with the windsock on. This is the MKE 600 with the windsock, the flat profile and air enabled. So this is what the mic sounds like with the high pass filter enabled and no windsock. This is the MKE 600 without the windsock, the low cut filter and air enabled. So you've heard the NTG2 about this far away from my head. So let's move them back. This is where the NTG2 completely falls apart. So this is what the microphone sounds like just outside of frame with the flat profile enabled and no windsock. This is the MKE 600 slightly out of frame without the windsock, the flat profile and air enabled. This is what the microphone sounds like just outside the frame with the high pass filter enabled and the windsock on it. This is the MKE 600 slightly out of frame with the windsock, the low cut filter and air enabled. So hopefully, I want to make this clear. I'm not here to bash Rode or anything like that because I just don't know why they perform so drastically. Why does one, in this case, the Rode NTG2, pick up so much room echo or reverb compared to a competitor? <laughs> the MKE600 isn't even marketed as you know a professional level boom mic or shotgun mic for that matter. It's a shotgun mic, but not like to a professional level. So why does the MKE 600 sound so much clearer than the NTG2. I can't tell you. <laughs> I don't know. Just don't get the NTG2. I guess the moral of the story is don't take one review for granted. Look around because chances are they're most likely in a sound dampened room and that skews the results drastically. If they're not in an open room, or in a room that's not treated, don't even consider it because when you're looking at professional level microphones, that sort of stuff, you gotta look into it because that shit pisses me off beyond belief. And you know, I made these sound panels myself on the cheap and they work more than I expected. So, I don't know, dude. Hopefully this video helped in some way or at least made you aware that shotgun microphones aren't always going to be the same, or even if the sensitivity is similar, their behavior is drastically different. And Rode, I don't know what else to say, but please, 
help people like myself, an amateur, fix the reverb, or at least, you know, have a switch on there that helps eliminate reverb or echo. Because if I need to buy sound panels or if I need to buy a blimp, it's not cheap. So sound panels it is, but personally, I wasn't happy with the NTG2, which is why I swapped it out for the MKE600. I'm not sure why, but Sennheiser decided that they wanted to include a, a cold shoe or hot shoe mount for the microphone, but it also has a tripod mount. I'm not sure like why they marketed this towards being useful for cameras, because I don't see why this would be required. And they also don't give you a compatible sort of connection, so you could put it on a typical boom arm. I'm Brett Madigan. Hopefully you enjoyed this random rabbit hole. <sighs> yes, there will be a return to what happened to video games on PC. Just stick around. They're in the works. Until next time, see ya. I think that's it. I think that's, I think that's the video. Now, I really... I'm a little bit drunk, by the way. <laughs> Don't add that, you dickhead. <laughs> oh, fuck. I'm on the mean mood morals. My YouTube channel. And then there. Shake it, but don't break it. <laughs> this is how I make videos.